After the death of his father Henry VII on April 21, 1509, Henry VIII ascended to the throne. He was a strong character and dynamic leader who is arguably most known for the founding of the Church of England and his turbulent love life. Even with all the power Henry VIII had, murdering his wives and picking as many ladies as he wanted. Something very sinister and dark made him tremble in his royal boots, we could call it karma. Every night in 1528, Henry VIII slept in a separate bed, but not in the way you might expect. The lady in waiting for his wife, Anne Boleyn, was his mistress. But the dread of contracting an illness was what made him sleep in different beds every night. Sweating sickness, a devastating disease that is now all but forgotten, scared the king. Welcome to History Mystery, today we are looking at the mysterious disease that terrified Henry VIII. Support us by subscribing, liking and sharing this video. So what is this mysterious disease that gave Henry VIII nightmares? We will unveil its mystery. The enigmatic illness that repeatedly swept over Europe during the Tudor era continues to captivate scientists. Five plagues that began in 1485 ravaged England, Germany, and other European nations. However, the cause of the outbreak and even its precise nature remains a mystery. An outbreak of the disease known as sweating sickness, sometimes known as English sweat or English sweating sickness, occurred five times in England between the years of 1485, 1508, 1517, 1528, and 1551. It was only found in England until 1528 to 1529, when it began to spread throughout Europe, starting in Hamburg and moving north to Scandinavia and then east to Lithuania, Poland, and Russia. The Netherlands also became involved, but other than Calais, a seaport in northern France, neither France nor Italy were affected by the disease. Sweating disease was something to be afraid of, and for good cause. It started suddenly and didn't seem to be curable. People would have a sudden feeling of dread, followed by a headache, neck discomfort, weakness, and a cold sweat covering their entire body. Dehydration, a fever, and palpitations ensued. 30 to 50% of those who contracted the sickness died within 3 to 18 hours. Although it's unknown who first experienced sweating sickness, some historians assume that it was brought to England by the mercenaries Henry's father employed to help him and his son usurp the crown. The contentious action ended the War of the Roses in 1487, although debate continues to this day regarding Henry VIII's rightful claim to the throne and whether the foreign warriors he brought to England to fight for him carried sweating sickness. Regardless matter who first had sweating illness, it quickly spread throughout the area. The King's printer Richard Grafton described it as a new kind of sickness that was so sore, so painful, and sharp, that the like was never heard of to any man's recollection before that time. That wasn't really the case. The most terrifying plague in history had already passed across England. Over 20 million people died in Europe alone between 1346 and 1353 as a result of the Black Death, a bubonic plague outbreak that killed an astonishing 60% of the world's population. However, there is no evidence linking sweating sickness to the plague. It appeared randomly, had no cutaneous symptoms, always followed by a period of intense rain or flooding, and typically affected either the very wealthy or the very poor. Before the development of modern medicine, it was impossible to predict when sweating illness would occur or how it would spread. However, that didn't stop doctors from trying to learn more, and the pandemic gave a guy by the name of John Kays an odd reputation. Given that the ailment seemed to mostly affect wealthy noblemen, he regarded the illness as an opportunity. He changed his name to the more impressive-sounding Johannes Caius and started treating aristocratic Englishmen who, like their monarch, had the illness-related paranoia. Caius discovered a different way to make money off of sweating illness by writing about it. The Sweating Sickness, a book or cone cell against the illness commonly called the sweat or sweating sickness was published by him in 1552. It describes the doctor's observations on the disease's symptoms, prevention, and treatment and is now regarded as a classic in medicine. Caius gave medical advice of the day, advising people to stay away from foul vapors and rotten fruit as well as to exercise frequently. 
he advised anyone suffering from the illness to drink herbal infusions, to sweat as much as they could, and to stay indoors. Despite the fact that the majority of Caius's patients continued to pass away, Derek Gatherer, a biomedical researcher, notes that Caius eventually became wealthy enough to fund his old Cambridge institution. Today, Caius' name is still attached to a college in Cambridge. Caius and other medical professionals were unable to diagnose or treat the illness. However, the impact of the diseases is evident from the fact that royals went to doctors for assistance. It was a constant source of fear for Henry VIII over his whole reign. Several members of his court were ill, including Cardinal Wolsey, who served as Henry's counselor and battled sweating illness multiple times. And Arthur, Henry's older brother, is thought to have perished as a result of it. Henry VIII counselor Thomas More declared that one is safer on the battlefield than in the city. That may not have been accurate, given that he was ultimately put to death for refusing to acknowledge Henry's divorce. As fast as it began, sweating illness ended. The last outbreak ended in 1551, the variation known as the Picardy sweat arose in France around 100 and 50 years later, but neither strain has since returned. This makes research challenging for historians and scientists working today. To rebuild the epidemics, they must rely on historical reports and rudimentary public health data. Despite the fact that thousands of people perished overall, the precise number is unknown because of inconsistent record-keeping and destroyed data. Regarding what sweating illness actually was, the verdict is still out. Some researchers believe that the cause of the illness was a rare hantavirus sickness known as the soul virus, while others speculate that the flu, food poisoning, or a condition known as relapsing fever may have been to blame. Whatever its origin, sweating illness had an impact. A half-century had passed since the last English pandemic when William Shakespeare wrote Henry IV, Part II in 1600. He had one of his most well-known characters, Falstaff, pass away from a sweat. Did the bard refer to a sweating illness or a sexually transmitted infection? That is another old historical argument, but the fact that it is still in contention shows how terrifying the sickness is even today. What mysterious stories do you know about? Drop your comment or head to our community tab to tell us your thoughts. While you are at it, remember to subscribe and check out these similar videos you will enjoy.